and then right on over to the right, a little ways, to the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 7. And we'll look at another one in Ecclesiastes chapter 10. These are all three dealing with the same subject tonight. And um, maybe a little bit uh, different type message this evening, but I felt like it's what the Lord laid on my heart. So you listen real carefully tonight. I'm going to preach to you on the subject, a good name. A good name. A good name in the Bible is uh, almost synonymous with what we call our, your reputation. A good reputation. Um, you're really three people. You're the one you think you are. You're the one other people think you are. And you're the one that God knows you are. And what we need to try to do is really be the kind of person that God wants us to be. And included in that is having a good name. A good testimony. Like testimony. And I want you to listen real carefully tonight. Uh, for several reasons, I had a I got a letter a while ago. I guess I guess somebody went and got the mail. It was laying on the counter. Um, I come in, open it up. It's from a preacher up north. Uh, he had a check in there for a hundred dollars. I just stuck it in the offering plate there a minute ago, and uh, it was just an offering for his motel room while he was here. And he he was. Um, he was talking about the camp meeting, and he said words I could not express what he and his wife received here at the camp meeting week before last. He got talking about how that God had blessed our church. And he said Sunday morning, I'll say this to you bus workers, he said Sunday morning the bus ministry and the special citizen really, really touched his heart. And he said that showed me uh, much about the heart of, this, of our church. And, uh, of course, with the school... Now, I guess, I guess you people realize that we are being looked at now more than we ever have. I mean, the eyes of people from up north and all around the country, but especially the eyes of people right here in western North Carolina are, are watching this church. I mean, they're watching you. It's, uh, it's kind of like, um, it's kind of like, I don't know, somebody... Uh, you know, one World Series last night or whatever, if one of them guys walked in here tonight, every eye in here would be on him. You'd say, hey, I want to see that guy won the World Series. See what he looks like. What's his name? You're interested. When God's blessed our, a church like he has ours, people automatically want to, hey, I'm going to find out. People do me like that all the time. I can feel them. When I'm around places and, and people introduce me and they say, this is Danny Castle, I can see them looking at me like, I'm going to try to find out what makes him tick. And I don't like that, but they do it. I want to go, ah, I can't at them. But I don't. I try to be nice. But they look at me all the time. As I told you before, I can walk through any place in Marion. And when I walk around, sometimes I can turn around like that, and the women are going, just like that. I want to say sometimes, you ain't heard nothing. I can really tell you some bad stuff. But... A good name. Like it or not, people's looking at us. They're watching every move we make. Now look here what it's... You say, I don't care what people think about me. You, you better listen to what your Bible says. You better listen to what your Bible says. There is a certain extent when it comes to serving God that we don't care. But when it, you're not supposed to do anything that would bring a reproach or a bad uh, reputation on the church of Jesus Christ or on the Lord. Proverbs 22, 1. A good name is rather to be chosen than great riches. Most people nowadays don't believe that. They don't care what kind of name they got if they can get rich. Example, Madonna. What her name is? She's a slut. But she don't care what people think because she's getting rich. Michael Jackson... Same way. They don't care what nobody thinks. You're getting rich. According to the Bible, you're better off to have a good name than you are a lot of money. Why? Because that money is going to leave. You ain't going to take it with you. You know, the, uh, the old saying says money talks? Sure does. I mind talk. Hey, don't yours? What does it say? Bye bye. That's right. <laughs> Amen. And love in favor rather than silver and gold. Now, Ecclesiastes chapter 7. Ecclesiastes chapter 7. 
verse 1. A good name is rather than is better than precious ointment. A day of death than the day of one's birth. Isn't it amazing how different God looks at things? We ought to cry in the nursery and shout at the funeral home. Chapter 10, verse 1. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 1. Here's a vivid illustration. Dead flies cause the ointment of the apothecary to send forth a stinking savor. <laughs> Amen. I like that verse. It sends forth a stinking savor. <laughs> you know what that means? It'll knock you down. So doth a little folly him that is in reputation for wisdom and honor. That means if a man or a group or a church or anybody has a reputation for wisdom and honor, just a little bit of sin can be just like throwing dead flies in something, in your food. It ruins it. You may have the best meal in the country, but if you got dead flies in it, whew, and that apothecary, the pharmaceutical word, and oh, that's why the old preacher used to preach dead flies in the drugstore. That was the title of the message. Now tonight I want to use it and bring you a message on a good name. There used to be an old saying that said his word is as good as his cigar. A good name is more than a name that has a good sound or meaning. It's who that person is. You've heard it. You've heard people say, Boy, I'll tell you, old so-and-so, she's got a bad name around town. Haven't you heard that? You don't be that way. And I've heard other people say, Well, I know that family or I know that guy. They've always had a good name in the community. It implies a good wrist, good credit, good business reputation, character, honesty. And the Bible said it's rather to be chosen than great riches. Money cannot give a person a good name. And it cannot keep a good name. Some people would be really, really blessed if they lost their reputation. It would be wonderful because they got a bad one. And I want to tell you this evening uh, two or three things that I feel like that you need to guard against to keep a good name. Especially you young people. You're just starting out. You young people, you can do something in one hour that will scar your name for the rest of your life. One hour. One hour. And you pay for it from now on. Just like they say you can break a string and you can tie it back together. But there's always going to be a knot in it. You can, you can cut a person and it'll, and it'll heal up. There's going to be a scar. You can put a scar on your name, your testimony, your reputation. You might get it back, but it'll be scarred. You never get it back just like it was. It always is scarred. Got a little advice this evening to the people. And the first thing I want to say to you is be careful about going in debt. Too many times we take on more obligations than we can meet. And it's never been easier. I mean, everybody out there today is trying to sell you something. Got it figured out now where you can buy uh, all kinds of furniture for $9.99 a week. That sound don't sound like hardly nothing, but it's $40 a month. For 75 weeks, you know. And then it goes on and on and on. You can get this washer and dryer for only $40 a month. And your car payment, you got it down to 225 You had a nice car, but wanted a nicer car. And then you got your house payment. And then you got your insurance and groceries and gas and uh, tag. And and then the kids' teeth. And then uh, all that so your hairdo. And, and you got clothes and, and doctor bills. And then and everything else. First thing you know, all you, it takes all you can do uh, to pay your bills and then you, you don't even have good credit anymore. It's very important for a Christian to pay their bills, own up to their obligation. That means if there's anybody in the world, y'all listen to me tonight, if there's anybody in the world that you owe money, if you owe money to anybody in this world tonight, and you've been avoiding them or hanging your head and, and they called you and you wouldn't answer the phone or really played the sissy and made your wife answer the phone and told her that uh, tell them you were sick or had a headache or something, you need to go to that person and sit down and say, hey, I don't have it right now, but by the grace of God, I'll pay you every dime that I owe you and keep your good name. 
You say, oh, they probably forgot about it. Are you kidding? They ain't forgot about it. There's a lot of men that run these little old country stores in the, out in the country who won't come to church because there's so many Christians that owe them money and won't pay them what they owe them. You say, well, Brother Danny, I just can't pay them. Listen, I don't care if it's Sears or J.C. Penney or anybody. If you write them a note and tell them I'm up against it and I'll send you $10 a month, they're not going to bother you. They know you're trying to make an honest effort to pay your bills and not beat them out of a dollar. Listen, your name is more important than beating somebody out of a little bit of money. I've said it, but I'll say it again. I don't ever, I hardly ever forget if I owe anybody anything. But if there's anybody in here I owe anything, if there's anybody in here that I told you I'd do something that I didn't do, if there's anybody in here, and I mean this, I mean it, if there's anybody in here that I told you I'd do something and I didn't do it, I might have forgot it, you come to me and tell me, and by the grace of God, I want to make it right. I don't want my name smeared by something that I've done and hurt the testimony of God's church. You say, well, Brother Danny, I heard that you've done this. Well, tell me about it. As far as I know tonight, nothing between me and nobody in here. A lot of you owe me money, but I... No, I'm just kidding. Uh, I'm just kidding. Listen, brother, listen, people don't forget it. People don't forget it. People don't forget it. You better be careful about going in debt. Listen. When, when they did wrong, they taught the paratroopers in World War II that when they wore the boots of the American army and the uh, American soldiers' uh, uniform, that if they messed up, that they brought reproach upon the entire uh, branch of the service that they were in. They said people will judge the entire army by what one of its soldiers does. Now I say to you tonight, people judge all of New Manor Baptist Church by what one person does. What you do on the job, what you do at school, they judge the whole church by what one person does. Amen? And by the way, you better not think for a second that people ain't watching you. Man, I know they're watching me. I mean, I know they're watching you too. We got a lady here tonight. I think about it every once in a while. Miss Brenda back there and her husband. She said, this was her testimony. She used to work in a bank uptown and she said that one day I came in the bank and while I was standing there in the bank that I'd done something and she never has told me what it was. She said that I'd done something and God spoke to her heart. And she said, when I'd done that, God spoke to her heart and said, you need to get down there at that church and start going to that church and help that boy. And they've been coming ever since. Ain't that right, Miss Brenda? Back how she sits with her husband. I don't know what I've done. Picked my nose. Maybe started crying over it, looked at my check. <laughs> Man, I don't know what I've done. Maybe I went and just laid down a, a, a track. I don't know what I've done. But whatever it was, thank God. You know what I done one time? I was uptown, and uh, I used to be bad to this. I I still do it once in a while. But I used to be around town. And it don't matter where I was at, man. If all the Lord wanted me to pray, I just get down. I still do it. But man, I used to when I first got saved, I just stop right in the store and just get down and pray like that. And I was up here at a clothing store one time. And man, I thought the Lord wanted me to pray. And I just stopped and got down the floor and prayed. And I forgot all about it. And a few days later, there was a girl that worked in there, told one of the people in our church, she said, that preacher down there scared me to death. They said, what? She said, he was walking through the store the other day. And all of a sudden, he just fell to his knees and started praying. She said, I know he's praying for me. She said, I'm not in right. I didn't even know she was there, man. I didn't even see her. That's her conscience bothering her is what that was. Ain't that right? The wicked flee when no man pursueth. Eh? And, but anyway, I, I don't know why I did that, but I tell you what, one thing about it, that they are watching. They are watching. They are watching. They are looking at us. That, you know what? It's got to the point nowadays where when you go to the bank, when you go to the bank with borrowing money for a building program, the bank say, hey, did you know that preachers and church are a big risk now that people don't want to take? Did you know, ladies and gentlemen, that um, uh, a lot of churches or a lot of businesses frown on so-called church ministries because there's been so many of them try to cheat them out of money that it's ridiculous. We ought to make sure that our bills are paid. By the grace of God, we have a good reputation in this town. I went up here at the bank. The banks was fussing over who got to loan us money this last time. I went up there to one of them and he said, Why didn't you come to us? I said, Well, you can give us a little bit if you want to. <laughs> Make a donation, man. Uh, but I thought that. 
But listen, I used to, I used to go into a place. I remember when we first started this church, when we first started this church, brother, we couldn't even borrow enough money to buy, buy that little bin up there on the hill. They wouldn't loan it to us. We had men in our church that owned property said, hey, we'll put our name signature on there and help the little church out. And we borrowed money. It's not like that now. Thank God. Thank God now, brother. I mean, they call us up wondering if we need any. They call it one. Listen, our, listen, the social services sends people down here. When people call the social services, they say, go down there at New Manor. They help a lot of people. And thank God we've got that reputation. Thank God we've got that name. Be careful about that money issue. Pay your bills. I'd rather pay money I don't owe than, and ru- than ruin my name by not paying money that I do owe. Amen? We need to make up our mind that we're going to do that. I'm going to be telling you about a preacher tonight a little bit while I bring this message. His name is Jay Frenaris. He pastored the great First Baptist Church of Fort Worth, Texas. I was there yesterday at the airport. You see Dallas and Fort Worth like this. You can see them both from the air. From the air. And the, the airport is called uh, Dallas-Fort Worth. It's right between them. And I, and I saw where the great First Baptist Church is or near there. J. Frank Norris was their pastor. They hated him as much as any man who's ever been hated in this generation. Every one of you preachers and every other interested layman in here needs to get the book about Dr. J. Frank Norris and read that book. I tell you, no preacher in this generation should be without that book and read it and find out, you know, where that great soul winning churches in America came from. They came from that man. And he said when he first went there, they wouldn't even loan him money. They wouldn't even loan him money. He could, they, would, they wouldn't even wait on him when he went in the store. Before it was over with, he could walk into any store in Fort Worth and get anything he wanted on credit. And a lot of times they would give him suits or something like that just to try to be a help to him. We need to be careful about money and make sure we're honest in our dealings of money. By, this, by the way, I'll say this too. You know, we're a big church. We've got a lot of people that do things for each other. Just because somebody goes to our church and they're a brother in Christ don't mean you should rip them off either. If they come over and do an honest day's work for you, pay them. Amen? Pay them. Help them out. It's not right to say, oh, well, I go to church with him. I don't have to pay him. His family's got to eat just like yours does, brother. And we've got to help each other and be honest in our dealings towards each other and toward the outsiders also. Let me show you, show you something else. If you're going to have a good name, you've got to avoid the appearance of evil. Many people have ruined their name, not because they did wrong, but, but they allowed themselves to appear to do wrong. Listen. Every man has three names. The one he inherits, that's your last name. The one your parents give you, that's your first name. And the one you make for yourself. They're watching us like never before. They're watching our church. Listen, since that school started out there, the eyes of this town, I don't know if you know this or not, and I, I'm, I'm not happy that it's this way. But do you realize, I don't know exactly what the figures are here, but in some states it's $5,000. That every kid that leaves the school system, the government don't give that county system $5,000. Not that much here in, in, in McDowell County, but just let's say a low $2,000. Low. You take a hundred kids out of the public school system, that is two hundred thousand dollars the school system loses. Now, I, you don't have to be a smart person to figure out somebody ain't going to be happy about that. And there are people right here in this town. And I don't have no hard feelings toward them. God knows my heart. I want to love everybody. I want us to get along. I've even corresponded with one of the principals. Hang on, we want to help out. We want to be a blessing. We don't want to cause problems. But you know, brother, there are people already who hate, hate, hate. What's going on here? 200,000 bucks is a lot of money for a little town like Marion. 
And that's just 100 kids. We have over 200 students out there right now. And I'm not happy that it has to be that way. But I'm telling you, there are people going to be watching us with a telescope. They're going to wait on one of you kids to mess up. And they're going to say, yeah, 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 I knew it. They're no different there than they are over here. That's why every kid that goes to New Manor Christian School ought to hold your Bible in your arm, hold your head up, live right, be a good example, because they'll judge the school just on what you do. Don't you think they ain't watching? You wouldn't believe the complaints I've heard just lately over us, us, me especially, and just causing problems in the restaurants around town. You know all that mob that came in here for the camp meeting? (laughs) Big crowds of people come in. The waitresses say things like, this is Danny Castle's fault. We got to work late. Blah, them people. And they complain. Listen, they claim because we don't leave enough tips. I could get off on that and preach on that a little bit. Do you know what a tip is? A tip is something that you choose to give somebody because you want to. It's a love offering. It's not part of the price. Hey, if you go to a restaurant where they say your meal is six ninety five and you get up there at the at the cash register and they say nine ninety five and you say, What? You said six ninety five. They say, Oh, we added the tip. Say, hey man, you lied to me. You told me it's six ninety five. And don't y'all agree with that? Hey, if it's part of the price, that ain't a tip. That's a price. Boy, y'all are a little weak on your amens here. I want to tell you something. I mean, but I give a tip. I leave a tip. I believe you ought to leave a tip. Stay with a track and be a good witness. But you know what they complain? Well, them people from New Manor, they don't, they don't, they don't, they're, 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 you know what they're trying to do? Find fault. They're looking at us. They're hoping something will go wrong. They're hoping one of our bus workers would mess up. They're hoping there'd be some kind of scandal tomorrow. Church. Listen, we're skating on thin ice, people. The devil is out there right now trying to hatch up something out of hell to mess me up, to mess you up, to hurt this church. We ought to make up our mind by the grace of God. We're not going to do it. We're going to protect the bloodstained banner of the Lord and keep a good name. Above reproach that they can't find fault with. Hey, you know what we had? We had a waitress follow us out in the parking lot and said, You forgot my your tip, sir. And I said, I didn't either. <laughs> you know, if I didn't have no change, I ain't gonna give her twenty dollars. But I want to be a good testimony. That was in Pigeon Forge. But uh, around here, you know, I'd have been a little nicer. <laughs> But did you know something? Did you know something, brother? Hey, hey, man, they're watching us. Some of our, some, they said some of the young people got jumped on at Wendy's the other night for cutting up too loud. And I don't know who you was, but listen, kids, you don't have to be, act like a heathen all the time. Now, now, listen, I love you. I love our young people. I think we got the best group of young people in the world. Sometimes backslid right now, but I still believe I still believe. I know what God can do through that bunch of kids right there. I know He's done it before. He'll do it again. That's why some of them's why some of them's so messed up right now. The devil's hit them with both barrels. And we got people. There, did you know there are little miniature youth choirs popped up all over this part of the country? I, I played the guitar and my fingers was sore the other night in Texas. And them kids named off all our songs one at a time saying, do this, do this, sing only child, do the bridge, do the over and over and over. I said, okay. I sat there and played and played. Teach us this one, teach us that one, teach us this one, teach us that one. And I can tell they're imitating these young people. They're all over Delaware. They're in Maryland. They're in New York. They're in, in different parts of, of uh, uh, other places up there. They're in Alabama. They're in Florida. They're in Texas. And brother, they watch those youth rally tapes over and over and over. They're watching you. They're looking at you. They think the greatest thing in the world would be to sing a new man of youth choir. I'm telling you kids, that puts responsibility on you to live right and live dedicated and serve God. So you keep a good name. I'm glad they don't know some of you. Where you're living right now, that'd be a great shock. Now I'll say this. I don't want I don't want us to be little religious snoots. 
I don't want our, I don't want you boys to be sissies. You know, some of these Christian places train them to be, they all come in and their hair is just fixed perfect and they got on jewelry and just like that. You know, they're too soft, man. I don't want that. I don't want that. And, and the world thinks that's what a Christian is. I like these boys here because they're rough. They're boys. I want you to be rough. Man, you ought to have dirt under your fingernails. Dirt under your fingernails makes you make finger food taste a little odd, but that's the way a boy ought to, ought to be. Amen. A boy ought to be like that. I'll be honest with you, and some of you parents ain't going to like this. Mr. Waddle probably won't like this. But I'll be honest with you, kind of like for him to cut up a little bit. Not when you're not supposed to now. Amen, brother. In class, shut your mouth. In school, do what you're supposed to. But I tell you, I don't want to be around a bunch of little Christian whims. I like it when they get a little rough. I ain't with them. Amen. Listen, you know why I play with all these boys and cut up with them and goof off with them? And listen, we go, we stand on our heads at camp. We get down the floor and roll around. And one of the pastors said, one of the pastors told me not long ago, he said, do you ride that bus with them? And I said, sure I do. I want them to be able to say, I can touch the pastor. He's a person just like me. I can talk to him. I don't want them to think he's way up there and I'm just, I'm scared to talk to him. I, and they don't, brother. They talk. Listen, I think it ought to be a place if you get you a boyfriend or a girlfriend, first place you ought to take them to the preacher's house. Bring them over and hang around a little bit. That's what a lot of these young people do. I said, I wouldn't dare take him to the preacher's house. Well, you need to dump that jerk in. That's right. You know what I like about a lot of our young people? A lot of them just come over to the house. They'll do it on Friday night and Saturday night. Test some of our last night. Just hanging around. Hey, listen. My daughter's sitting over there tonight. You know what she does? When they want to go eat out or something like that. There's been lots of times when she begs me to go. She begs me to go. Dad, she, lots of times she says, Daddy, please go with me. She's trying to get me to go somewhere with them tomorrow night. And I won't. I mean, I'm getting one night at home. Glory to God. It's going to be great. I get to be at home or not. Better not say that. Something will happen. But you know what? She begs me to go all the time. You know, I told my wife one day, I said, you know, that's a blessing when young people want you. How, hey, how long has it been since you knew teenagers who wanted their parents to go on dates with them? That's a blessing, brother. Yeah, hey, if I ask some of you teenagers, you want your mama to go with you? You'd say, you know, if mama's going, I'm not even going to go. What's the matter? Are you hiding something? You got, are you ashamed of something? You know what some of you kids ought to do? Everybody in here, all of you that ain't married should quit acting like you are. And all of you that are married should quit acting like you ain't. That's what's wrong with America, brother. The single people's acting married and the married people's acting single. It ought to be you married people that's all hugged up like this tonight. You, I can tell them right now who's married in here. Here's him. Here's her. <laughs> That's right. I can tell who's single. Just like that. My soul. <laughs> hey, did you know? I want this. Hey, we got an unusual group of young people. They ought to want to go over to Mr. Waddle's house and aggravate him once in a while. So I, I've had them come over to the house and say, Danny, let's, let's sing. Let's talk. Let's pray. So I've, had a lot, I've had these teenage boys come to my house at night and say, Brother Danny, I need to talk to you. Pray with me. Hey, man, that's wonderful. Glory to God. I like them because they're real. When they're down, they're down. I mean, there ain't no fate to them. But... Calm down and quit throwing food. I mean, I like to throw food. But I don't. I do, I like to. I know how millions of such heathen. We've been together so long. You know what I like to do? I like to put my spoon like this and hit it and make it go well with that. I've always thought that was so neat. I've done all that stuff. We used to leave the sugar real loose at school and the salt. Next person in there, ah, but don't do that, man. Don't do that. I don't do it. I like to, but I don't. If 
I'm in Florida or somewhere and I don't, nobody don't know I'm a preacher. Sometimes we'll, you know, you need to have a little fun once in a while. But Lord help, man. There's people around here watching. We can't be acting like that. We cannot be acting like that. They see people out there, they think that's wrong. <laughs> they do. They're, they're all mixed up. They don't know no better. Them idiots think you're supposed to litter your car instead of the ditch. That's stupid. The car costs $20,000. I ain't going to throw ice cream in the floor of my car. That's crazy. You are feeding animals. But you know what? You can't be doing that around. You know why? Because you, you testimony, man. Your reputation. People's watching you. People's watching you. But they see my car. Listen, I'd like to pass everybody on the highway. But I just, I don't pass them all. Because people's watching. People's watching you. I pass them so I can witness to them. They can see my bumper sticker. I see, I see one of them new agers or them three. Yeah, that's right. I do. I get, I, I get right over in front of them, and then let them read it, and then I take off and leave them. Amen. I say, you need to hear that. I've seen these tree huggers going down the road in these Volkswagen vans. Look like they just come back from Woodstock, you know, the first Woodstock. And and they and they're going down the road. I want to give them a good witness. Amen. I tell you what, you better watch it. You better watch it. You know, I go, especially when I'm uptown, I'll think of something I got to write down, and I do this all the time just out of habit. I could. I do it all the time. Now, if you saw me driving down the road and the wind has tinted my car, and you saw me going like that and had the sunroof open or something, and you wanted to be sign something wrong, what would you say? I saw him smoking a cigar. <laughs> I, thought, I saw Danny Castle. I saw him uptown. Somebody said they saw him in beer up here one day. That's a bunch of bull. I ain't never bought a beer in my life. But I, listen, it's all right if they're lying, but we're not supposed to give them. And so you kids, you better behave when you go to these restaurants. You want to cut up, go home cut up. Don't make a scene because you can be a bad testimony for the Lord Jesus Christ. You sure can. They're watching us like never before. They're just waiting on something to happen out here at this school. They're just waiting. I said, that's a pretty good church. And they said, we went and visited a man down there and he's sitting there drinking a beer. It must not be much what you're down there at that church. I said, it is too. It's a good man, good, good church. They judged that whole church by what that one man did. People going to do it. People going to do it. You know what I want these young people to say? I want these young people when they grow up to say, somebody say, uh, hey, did you ever go to the beach? Yeah. Went with my pastor. You went with your pastor? Yeah, he took a big bus, took a bunch of us to the beach, and they left the boys off one place, went on down, let the girls off another place, and great time. Huh? Have you ever been, have you ever been up north? Yeah. Went with my pastor. My pastor took us to Washington, D.C., which we're planning on going next year. And they showed us New York City and we got out on the street, sung, had a good service. And... Have you ever been seen here? Yeah, I went to have a preacher one time. Hey, some of these kids, I mean, Father State, they've been out in North Carolina, been with us singing. What's wrong with that? Nothing. Nothing. Amen. Keep your testimony. Keep your testimony. And J. Frank Norris. When he pastored that great church. You see, he pastored the First Baptist Church of Fort Worth, Texas, and the Temple Baptist Church in Detroit, both at the same time, the two largest churches in America, at the same time. They, taught, they called him the Texas Cyclone. He feared no man. There's story after story of riots turning to a revival. There's one case where they had raised several thousand dollars to have him run out of town. They hired a man, uh, an, an inve a private investigator to come and dig up junk on him. Somebody burned the church and they tried to claim it him. He had preached real hard and they, somebody burned the church down and they had a man get up in court and say, I saw Norris standing under the street light at 2 a.m. when the church burned. 
And his attorney got up there and said, you're a lying. They checked the records and the streets got cut out at 8 o'clock that night. And they put him back on the stand and he got up there and he said, oh, I'm sorry, I made a mistake. Uh, it was the moon shining. And Norris's attorney got up there and said, you're a lying. We went back and checked the records. The moon wasn't shining out, it was cloudy. And God got a hold of that man, one of those men that was trying to hang him. And Norris got to lead him to the Lord. And they wound up singing old time religion in the, in the courtroom some of them times. And he got to preach. I mean, brother, he had a name. He had a reputation. When that man walked in, people looked, people listened. They said, that's God's man. You better listen to what that man's got to say. He say he ever have a blotch on his life? Yeah, he did. But he overcome it and lived right. Shot a man one time in self-defense. man come to his office to kill him. The caretaker had a gun there in Norris. That's all you'll hear in Texas now if you Yeah, he shot a man. He shot him in self-defense, defend him, and he was acquitted just like that. He was innocent, trying to protect his family. You know what they done? The district attorney of Fort Worth tried to have him run out of town. They said, we'll get that preacher if it's the last thing we do. We hate him. Sit around trying to plot to figure out ways to get him. If you think they ain't people out here, out here in this town, religious people, you got another thing coming. If you heard the stuff, my daughter is sitting her at the doctor's office one day. It's been a couple of years ago. Carrie sitting right there. She said, these two old ladies was just giving me and this church down the road. Well, I'll tell you one thing. I've heard that he just took all those people's money and now, and, and he sold, sold all their money and now they're starving and he won't give them a dime. And she said, she sat there and sat there and sat there and sat there. And finally she spoke up and said, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I know who you're talking about. He's my daddy. And all of a sudden they said, oh, is that right? Why, well, we've been thinking about convincing your church. Oh, all kind of old hypocrites like that around. You know what they done to him? The district attorney who tried to get Frank Norris run out of town and was trying to make up stuff to put him out, get rid of him, was driving out with his girlfriend in a Cadillac one night and had a bunch of liquor and crossed over a crossing. I think it got hit by a train there or something. Cut, cut them in two just like that and splattered them all over the highway. And somebody found a, a quart jar of liquor busted sitting up straight on the highway and had part of their brains in it. And somebody took that quart jar of liquor and brain, brought it to the preacher, and he took it to church the next Sunday night and set it on the pulpit and preached on the wages of sin is death. And they said it scared the fool out of them people. That's a man there, brother. That's a man. There was a rich man in Fort Worth who, who run what they call the blood bucket. That was the red light district down in Fort Worth. And he had done had his funeral all planned out. And when he died, they called his, they, his, uh, his whoever was handling his estate, called J. Frank Norris and said, we're going to give you $1,000 to preach his funeral. And here's what he won't said. Now you do it. And they wanted him to elevate him to the angels. A thousand dollars in nineteen thirty was a lot more money, like ten thousand now, or maybe more. Ten thousand dollars right now. They said we're gonna give you a thousand dollars, preach his funeral. He said, I'm not gonna do it. And people got upset, and the people got in the community got upset, and they said, You've got to. He was a man. He said, I'm not gonna stand out and lie about a man when we all know that he ain't even saved. He, they talked about the gates being open for him and everything at the funeral. Sunday night, he got up and read his text and talked about some other gates being open. It's a hell. And he preached on in hell. He lift up his eyes, being in torment. I'm telling you, folks, if you'll just stay right, and you don't have to compromise to get along in this world. Just stay right and do right and keep a good name. There's some people that hated his guts, but there's one thing about it. He left a name. He left a name. He left a name. One Sunday school teacher who was real pious one time asked his student, said, now why do you think people call me a Christian? One little kid said, 
because they don't know you. <laughs> a good name is attained by many actions and lost by one. Number three, I'll say this and I'll be through. Be dependable. Be dependable. We should all learn to be on time, meet our obligations, his word you bond, all that kind of stuff. Not to be made light. Many people leave their children with money, enough to get a college education, but not a good name. I don't want our church to be like the one in Revelation where it said, Thou hast a name that thou livest, but is dead. I asked a preacher about somebody in, in one time. Or he asked me about him. He said, did you come to your church now or something? And he said, well, that guy claims to be a preacher, but he said he owes everybody in MacDowell County. And I said, man, that ain't much of a name to have. You know what? That ain't much of a name. People may doubt what you say, but they'll always believe what you do. Be dependable. If you tell somebody you're going to do something, do it. If you tell somebody you're going to be there, be there. If you can't, call them and tell them. Man, if there's anything that gripes me, is people say, I'll meet you at 10 o'clock morning, and they don't even show up and don't even bother to call you and tell you. You know what that is? That's lying, brother. That's lying. I mean, look, used to people, when they told you something, they'd do it. And I know sometimes things come up you can't help, but a lot of times people will tell you anything just to get you off of their back, tell you what you want to hear, and they got no intention to do what they're going to say. That's a sorry way for a child of God to conduct their lives. We need some character. We need some backbone. They say, hey, listen, by the grace of God, I want our teenagers here in our church grow up saying, well, there's one thing about it. If my preacher told you he'd do it, he'll do it. I want our teenagers to come. If somebody comes to them and says, hey, you know what I heard about your preacher? I want them to be able to look there in confidence and say, you're crazy. You don't know what you're talking about. And know they're telling the truth. I don't want them to say, oh man, reckon that's really true. Uh -huh. I want them to know. Not Brother Danny, he wouldn't do that. I want them to know that. God have mercy on us, people. I want you, I want to live and you ought to live. Oh, you men in here tonight, you ought to live so that every time somebody sees you talking to a woman, they don't think you're trying to flirt with her. Have you ever met these characters that every time they're around one, everybody says, oh, you better watch out. Better keep your wife away from him. Better keep your husband away from so-and-so, boy. She's a floose. She'll get him. You ought to have a testimony so that every time somebody sees you talk to somebody, they don't got the wrong idea, man. The wrong idea. If you're always making Google eyes at the girls, then maybe you need to check up on your character. And get it under control. And be what God wants you to be. Hey, we don't need no scandals around here. There's enough lies being told on us without something true happening. You hear me, people? I said, we don't need no scandals in here. Lord in mercy, we've done enough trouble. We done had them hit and licks and knocks and everything else. For God's sake, we don't need one of you bus workers or one of you teenagers or one of you uh, Sunday school teachers or one of you preachers turn out to be in some kind of pervert. Get yourself, get yourself right with God, man. Go up in the woods somewhere and pray and fast a while. God takes that filth out of you. He can do it. He will do it. You won't never get the victory completely and forever over sin. But I'll tell you what you can do. You can beat it down where it don't have control in your life. You'll never be perfect in this world. Thank God you can get the victory. You don't have to live under the bondage of sin. Be dependable and punctual. Tonight, it scares me to think. I heard what the devil would plan, how he'd try to get in. 
And the devil's smart. You think you got all the holes covered up, he'll come in this way. You cover this hole up, he'll come in over here. You think, I'm all right, he ain't bother me. He's coming in the back door on you now. There's only one way. Stay right with God. Stay close to God. Let the Lord fight your battles for you. A good name. A good name. Now there's going to be lies. There's going to be gossip. And that's all right. That ain't going to hurt us. Don't hurt us. Lord, man, I've had everything the world told on me. I beat babies in the nursery. I sell drugs. I mean, I, you know, they, everything the world been told on. That's just some stupid people don't know what they're talking about. That's ridiculous. There's gossip. There's some gossiping people right here marrying you. This ain't nothing but a little Harper Valley, man. And they people hate our guts just because they're jealous of us. And we're going to have to realize tonight that we have a name. And it's not so we can make ourselves to be somebody. But what we need to realize is if they look at us, that's the way they judge the Lord and the Bible and God's work. Let's protect it. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Now tonight, I'd like to ask you a question. While I've been preaching, has God put His finger on something in your life? Now, I believe He has. Now, I believe there's people all over this room tonight that something I said just hit like a nail stuck in your heart tonight. And I'm not trying to be mean. I don't know. I, I don't know who I'm preaching at tonight. I'm just preaching what the Lord laid on my heart. If it hit tonight, then the only thing you can do is do business with God and do something about it. Maybe there's something you need to pray about. Maybe there's something you need to change. You know, there's a lot of people don't even come to our church because they don't want to have to put up with all the scrutiny and looking at. It. They'd love to be a part of this church, but they think, man, if I went there, everybody'd be just looking at me and watching me, and they're not willing to pay the price. There is a price to pay. There is a price to pay. People's watching you. People's watching you. It could mean the difference between heaven and hell in some soul of how they watch you conduct your life. Dear Lord, help us tonight. God, forgive us of anything we've done that would smear the name of this church and the Lord Jesus Christ. Help us to be good examples on the job, at school, wherever, whatever we do. We'll begin. thank you for it in Jesus' name.